we're going to try and cobble together a, a miscellaneous video, aren't we? <laughs> but we probably... Which, which lasts about two months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just gonna try and clean out some of these joints not really take any of this ivy off at the moment because it's obviously holding everything in we've learned that the hard way so I'm just gonna try and clean out the joints as best I can maybe remove some tiny bits of ivy that are just not doing anything <clears throat> leave the big ones in for the time being and try and repair this the 
best I can. Never done anything like this before, so <clears throat> I've been watching some videos, and that obviously makes me an expert now, but no, I don't know what I'm doing. I watch videos to give me confidence, really, and to learn. Learn why things are done like they're done, the way things are constructed with the layers of the stone, so then it makes sense to be able to put them all back together again. But anyway, the plan is take out enough, get rid of the little bits of ivy that I can get rid of so that I can point some of these joints to at least get some strength back in it. A little bit unsure of what to take out and what not to take out. Seems silly to say, I was just about to say, YouTube's amazing for learning all these things that maybe you'd back in the past would have had to go to the library to hire books after books to learn how to do all of this and YouTube makes all these things accessible if you've got the inclination to do it yourself <laughs> and the reason why I said it seems silly to say because we're doing YouTube video and we will not be the kind of video that you would come to to learn how to do something you might come to learn how not to do it but probably not the instructional learn how to do it hopefully hopefully we carry on doing videos for a long time and hopefully by that time we may have learned enough and picked up enough that we can help people too as much as other YouTube videos help us because we've used YouTube so many times in the past for <clears throat> fixing cars, bits and pieces to do with our cars, we've used YouTube, um, I've done, recoded an old the old car that we sold before we left bits and pieces because of YouTube it's just an amazing resource really and it would be nice if we ever got to that point where someone watches our videos and thinks wow that really helped So I'm chattering away because I don't really know what I'm doing and to be able to get this back to the point of being able to point in there's so much loose mortar I would love to try and do the stones on the inside myself and maybe I could with the smaller patches but I think the large the large holes 
I think they're far beyond, beyond my capabilities at the moment. The plan was to do this a few days ago, but we've had some septic tank issues. It's been overflowing and because the land is so overgrown, it's taken a fair while to locate where the inspection chambers are. Because we need to cut all cut for all the brambles to find them you couldn't see them so it's just a case of we asked both farmer neighbors one pointed us where he said he thought the tank was <clears throat> the other one directed us to possibility of the inspection chamber because we got one inspection chamber outside the house Um, and that was the one that we first noticed, or Ben first noticed anyway, that was backing up. And then we went to get rods, off down screw fix, a couple of packets of rods, because we're always going to have a septic tank, so we need rods. And um, bought 18. I think it was 18 meters in the end worth of rods and it was still blocked and we found the other tank or the inspection chamber and that was very blocked so then it was look for possibility of another inspection chamber that's somewhere trying to find that by listening um, when rodding it along the along the land so if you can hear it came to the conclusion we thought we'd found where it was it, it wasn't there it must have just been an, another block along the pipe and then eventually we did find the block not far actually from the septic tank and it looks like um, a big tree had fallen over in the past and as it hit the ground one of its branches must have pierced the earth and just cracked the pipe of the septic tank So it's been a been a few days of Ben digging, trying to locate it, locating it, cutting it out, buying the new bits, and then this morning. I think about seven o'clock this morning he was down the end of the land repairing the septic tank so other than a bit of a tidy up operation that we've got to do the septic tank hopefully is now fixed
also sorry about the generator I've got the washing machine going so that's when it goes on I don't think there's one joint left untouched by Ivy. There might be one there. Wow. Must have missed that patch. Got a bit in there. But I've been learning as much as I can about fill in voids and what to use to fill voids and different techniques that people use and I hope I hope I can do it justice May have changed the plan on where we put the gazebo <laughs> our plans change all the time because it had already been concerning me that maybe it wasn't the best idea with the walls in the state that they are internally apart from this one on the external but mainly it's the internal that's got the problems um, and then there was a comment on YouTube about in our under our video about a concern of putting the gazebo in and the stones fall in. So then that's made me think about it. So then we're wondering whether we can put it around the side where we park the car. It's going to be big enough that the car can get in there. We're hoping that the car might help with the stability maybe an anchor the gazebo with the car somehow that's how we did the tent in the beginning when we couldn't get the tent um what they called pegs tent pegs when we couldn't get those in the ground because we realized the ground was so hard ben came up with the idea with the guy ropes that we shut them in a couple of them in the boot lid and a couple on either side went into the back doors and got trapped into the back door and that kept the tent secure and not blowing away until he could come up with a better idea with the blocks to pin it down it's pretty resourceful with things like that So, yes, the plan with the gazebo may have changed, and then we'll try and anchor it to the wall of the house. And hopefully that will work.
these old buildings just I know it's crumbling now but that's the fault of the ivy and it not being kept under control and maintained but these old buildings we're only guessing this one's just over 200 years old because we see it a structure of it and you can't see it but that way there used to be uh, probably bigger than this outbuilding when I get down I'll turn the camera but there's a wall there a structure there and that used to be a house there and that fell down years ago or half of it did the roof came off and same as this the roof came off the wind used to catch the roof roof came off the, the half went but on a whole if they're well maintained they're solid and it's just amazing to think it's probably stood a minimum of 200 years maybe more maybe two three and it's still here and this is just amazing to me there's some um, place in my hometown that I used to love going to when I was little called um, the court hall and I think I can never remember the exact year but I think it was 1540s or something like that but that had been there and it was an old court obviously a courthouse court hall and it was a jail and it's well maintained because it's obviously a I don't know if it's grade one or two listed so it's maintained and had repairs done to it over the time but I think it just blows my mind the, uh, the amount of time that some buildings have stood and if you look after them they just stand so it would be nice if we don't lose this one and we can bring it and keep it because history, any history really is a fascination to me but I have quite a huge fascin fascination with architectural history I suppose I had thoughts of when I was little of being a forensic detective, an archaeologist. I think my mind works like into piece bits and pieces together to come to the answers to work out how something works, why something works. and finding lost things, you know, like treasures and things like that. I'm brushing this out because I'm a little bit wary of hitting anything with chisels and hammers. Don't really want to upset it.
get to hear how peaceful it is now. Hate the generator. Not sure how well this is going to go if trying not to take too much ivy out and point around it, but it's so deeply embedded. that I don't think it would survive. The wall wouldn't survive it being taken out, so it's just going to stay where it is for now. Been feeding it some more petrol.
Not 100% sure <clears throat> on what mix of mortar to go for at the moment. It's obviously going to be lime, three point, uh, NHL 3.5. 3 to 1, or 1 to 3, 3 to 1 seems to be the middling normal mixing ratio. And then I've watched videos the last couple of days of people use uh, 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, and then they might use 2 of a certain kind of sand and then 1 of another kind of sand. I think it obviously depends look, from what I watch on the climate. And the kind of stone that's available. So I do know I was using. I think it was three mil sharp sand and NHL three point five. But I need to decide on the ratio. I like to read a lot before I do anything. Read and watch things so I know I'm doing it. Or I know that I'm doing it as well as I can be without having a clue what I'm doing. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, I was just looking at them. Um, It looks like there's more stones on the left hand side than there is uh, on the right hand side as a, than there is on the left. Look at this portion there. Yeah. You've got the two big chunky stones, haven't you? Yeah. You've got one stone there and you've got a whole lot on that side, yeah. but not. I suppose it depends what, what they can find. That one's cracked, look. So. Yeah, I don't know if it's cracked or it looks cracked yeah, or whether it's two different stones. Right.
of trouble with dungarees. All the bits go straight down there, right out to your ankles. Right, so after doing the bits and pieces that I did earlier, I've I've decided I'm not going to go any further with doing any of the pointing at the moment. I'll turn the camera around so you can see the bits and pieces. I think I need to see if the neighbour will maybe come and have a look. Give me some ideas on whether this is um, safe to do or not. I'm not sure if it is. And I didn't want to carry on going any further with it. Uh, when I get down, I'll show you what I mean. It's it seems to be bulging out at the top. Um, uh, I don't know. I just don't think it's it's safe for repointing. I think it needs taking down, maybe to the top of the window lintel. It's just about to start raining. So anyway, let, let me flick it round and I can show you what I mean. Right, so in here, there is no mortar. There's none there. There I didn't dig it out, but it's ever so dry and loose and the same in there. It really is just the ivy think holding this back um, I'll show you from down on the ground in a moment these these two stones here they look they look like they're coming away a little bit anyway from up here but when you look at it from down below it does look like it's pulling the top part is pulling outwards um, obviously something needs doing about it because like we said before this does open out onto a road so <clears throat> it needs sorting properly really um, but again here there's nothing there's not a lot in any of these joints to repoint to anymore it's, it's gone so further down you go and this is the lintel of the window and the further down you go from there you start to see the ivy hasn't taken too much of it away so this these portions may be repairable but we're wondering if this may need to come down to window lintel height and be re rebuilt from that back up for safety more than anything I would hate to think that we didn't do what we should do safely and end up responsible for hurting somebody. Right, I'm going to pause for a second so I can get downstairs or the ladder and be back. So there we go. Those are the couple of, well, the top couple of rows are the ones that seem to be leaning forward not sure if it's when the roof fell it gave it that little bit of a push the rest of them really don't have any mortar in between them either but they seem to be in the right place even though they have none of the mortar left if I take you to the side not the top I'll try and see if you can see what I mean with the way it bows out at the top. Yeah, the ivy makes it look more bow than it actually is, but it is it is looking like it's bowing a bit at the top. And we are novices, especially to this. Neither of us have done 
bricklaying, let alone stone masonry or whatever it's called, stone buildings. So we're not 100% sure, but we wonder if it needs to come down to the top of the window lintel. Um, and maybe that will make it safer to leave it for a little bit longer. I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. Just, but need to consult with the neighbour that may have a bit more expertise in this kind of thing. <clears throat> oh, you can see the other peak of the roof through there, or the other gable end. So that's where we're at at the moment, or where I'm at at the moment. I blew out the joints and it, it was just looking not the greatest. So I thought, come down, get Ben to have a look. And he sort of agrees with me that the fact that there's just no mortar left in maybe four or five rows at the top on the peak there. There's nothing to mortar to, there's nothing to point to. There's nothing already there holding them in. So we will do some advice asking before we do anything else. That's the last thing I want. Is to do anything that causes us to collapse. See how they sit out. from the rest of it. Not sure if it was where the roof came down and gave them a bit of a, a knockout as it went down. So, unfortunately, I didn't get experience doing that. The drilling that you can hear is Ben. So, so, yeah. This is cold. Right. So I'm away from the outbuilding now. After speaking for about five or so minutes, from realising I wasn't actually recording. <laughs> so I've redone it, and I've probably missed all what I said in the first place. Um, but now. I said about the drilling at the end of it, that was Ben, I'll flick it around in a sec and you can see what Ben's up to. Exciting stuff! <laughs> and this is Ben! Hello! <laughs> Probably already said in some videos, I'm not, I may not have done, I can't remember. Thank you, dear. But yeah, I might have done this morning when I was talking about uh, the outbuilding. Um, and my sort of um, hesitation at maybe putting the gazebo in the outbuilding because of the instability of the stones, really. And then, <coughs> pardon? Has now been realised. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's kind of um, c cemented it, really, because somebody said in the comments they didn't like the idea of the gazebo going in there, just with the walls being possibly unstable so then that made me think a little bit and then after today especially seeing those top ones up the top maybe the gazebo in the outbuilding not the greatest idea so yesterday we thought was it yesterday or was it this morning everything just merges i don't know today <laughs> so we thought well i'm sure something will go wrong but we thought We've already pre-warned the lady that we've, um, we're, friends with. we're friends with, who walks her dog around the, it's like a, block, I was going to say the block and then I thought, is it a block? I don't know, but she walks the dog around and I did WhatsApp her earlier and say, just, just a heads up, we're putting up the gazebo, so if you see anything white and huge flying over your house later on, that'll be what it is. So, this is only part of it at the moment. We have got sides and windows, no less. Um, 
and Ben is just trying to step, in. step into our workshop. <laughs> ben is cobbling together a makeshift. Try not let, try to not let it blow away, blow away system. It's not usually part of what comes in the box when you buy one of these. <laughs> this um, this spectacular bracing, right. but it's, we'll see. Because at the moment it's it's a little blowy, but it's really not that windy. So, but believe it or not, it's really quite difficult to drill into a stone walled house, isn't it? Very. <laughs> what have we done? Five. Five. I went round five, five, yeah, okay. yeah. So we got a few. First time I tried. Looking I'd say we got a few holes, but they're not even holes; they're no. just little indents. First time I tried was for the tent. Yeah, and just and the tent was here. Super lucky. And just went in. It's hard work, but it went in, and that is a lovely fit to. Today I can't find anywhere. No. So that at the moment is what's holding it down. Oh, and at this end, a block. Same as a tent. Same as a tent. I'd like to say, and we haven't blown away yet, but we do have a really quite heavy sofa bed in our tent, so we shall see. But we do have one, two, three more legs to secure to something. <laughs> Not really sure what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cooper nice. did say to Ben, he's going to be just sat holding the pole for the next few weeks whilst we do these joists. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. That should be our motto. It'll, It'll be fine. fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. At some point, it has to be. And then the other one will be. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Slowly. We'll get there slowly. Yeah. There's always tomorrow. Very slow. Yeah, we say that quite a lot. There's always tomorrow. It's tomorrow. So there, that, is tomorrow. there is tomorrow, but that's where we're at at the moment. I like the curve on it. Hmm, it's nice. As it goes uphill. Yeah. So that's where we are at the moment. Trying to put this up. An eventful week. Oh, what an eventful week. I think we've said on other bits that we're gonna we're gonna try and cobble together a, a miscellaneous video, aren't we? But we probably which, which lasts about two months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we probably said on other bits. I don't know. I've lost track now. But we've had septic tank troubles. We had an overflowing inspection chamber. Um, and then the kind of where's Wally hunt for the other inspection chamber, wasn't it? Which and we then the, didn't know was there. No. And then the Where's Wally? The hunt continues for the septic tank, but yeah. we did actually find it, and we did find the problem, and Ben has fixed it. Yes. So that's it for now, anyway. There might be other events that happen. Yeah, it's only Thursday. It's, it's only Thursday, so the week's not finished yet. We'll see what happens. We put. I'll come back in a bit when we put the side on. The side on, and when we got these three legs secured, and then tomorrow morning when we come out of the tent and this isn't here anymore, I'll update you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for the time being. Okay, so now I've actually turned the microphone on and not just stuck it on the lapel. We'll try again. So. We are in the gazebo with its sides, absolutely gorgeous. Let me turn it around for you. There it is, and it's full, full splendor. Look at that. Now, each of the sides, no, that's not true. Each panel is a single panel. So we have a feeling, and they're only held on with Velcro, we have a feeling in the morning that this end one will have blown in um, 
and possibly the opposite end one will have blown out we did reinforce it a little bit down the outside just just to keep them together a little bit we're not putting anything in here tonight we want to see what it's like in the morning is it still going to be here in the morning um we're not holding out a lot of hope uh you can see the pile of stuff waiting for the skip behind just outside if the sides blow in we'll see what we can do the roof we believe will be good well we call it a roof the canopy um the frame's good and that's really secure um so we'll see what happens it has been such such a strange week it is thursday it's friday tomorrow even though we're always here we do look forward to fridays and saturdays um we've got the neighbor coming down dawn said about to have a look at the gable end just see how safe it is the best way forward um so dawn's pleased with that um i might mess around with some pipe work tomorrow um if this is still intact tomorrow we might get a workbench out here which means we may be able to start the joists next week we'll see how that goes speak to you soon thanks for watching Bye bye